What can I do right now to protect my privacy and my security? To learn tips and tools to preserve my data on both fronts, I'm chatting with hacker and educator Matt Mitchell Where? and cybersecurity expert Eva Galperin. First up, privacy. Sorry, privacy. Matt is a privacy advocate at Crypto Harlem, as in cryptography, the process of hiding or coding information. Okay, what do I do to make all this safer for me? What do I do? Who do I talk to? How do I start? You have to ask yourself, is this a problem that needs to be fixed? Privacy isn't a switch. It's a dial. You get to control how much you share with who and with what. Have you ever used this website called Google? I've heard of it. Yeah. Well, let's check this out. Well, if we go here to myactivity.google.com, it'll show us all the things that you've been doing. So for example, when we go here, we see all the different Google services that you use. I don't think they make a service you don't use. These platforms are so deeply embedded in many of our lives, and for good reason. They make products that can be really useful. It's hard for me to imagine going a single day without searching the web or using a navigation app. But they also suck up a lot of our data. It's a trade-off that I'm comfortable making within reason. I didn't know this, but I can literally just delete huge amounts of data that Google is storing about me. And the same is true for a lot of other services we can dial to whatever level we feel comfortable. For example, on LinkedIn, you would just click on me, and then you would go to your settings and privacy. Here, when we go to manage your activity, it tells you that, you know, you started sharing your LinkedIn data with a permitted application. Treating privacy like a dial means it's not all or nothing. You can have your data cake and eat it too. Like now I'm thinking that I want to log into everything, all my social media, my email, my LinkedIn, everything regularly and look to see who is using these. Exactly. It is about awareness. Furthermore, the companies, they know how many people actually use the privacy controls. And by you even peeking in it, you're saying, I believe privacy matters. At the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Eva shows me how I can take my privacy game to the next level. Learning some surveillance self-defense. Although apparently not that kind of self-defense. So the next step in your privacy journey is uh, fighting back against uh, types of corporate surveillance. Uh, and one of the things that websites really like to do uh, when uh, is not just to track what you are doing on their website, but to track all the other websites that you go to. And they do this using cookies. There's some companies I trust. And I'm like, fine, you have these cookies. They're chocolate chip. I know where they were made. I know what you're doing with them. But then there's these third party companies. I don't want them around me. You can use a browser extension to eat these cookies uh, and fight back against this kind of tracking and keep those websites from seeing where else you're going. Browser extensions are add-ons for your web browser that give it extra features and functionality, like eating cookies. I'm imagining this like digital cookie monster that's eating up all of these pieces of my online activity so that companies don't know what I'm doing online and it reduces the amount of privacy tracking. Am I understanding that? What these browser extensions do is they get rid of uh, the tracking cookies that these websites use to see all the other sites that you're going to, which is none of their business. 